Hello and welcome to this Take 5 video. I'm John Recknagel, Application Specialist with Techless Structures. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to drain and warp precast double T's. So here we are within the model. I place one double T, I'm going to copy it over. And then come here to my Applications and Components and load in my double T seam connection. Click on the left T, the right T, and then specify where I want the seam to be placed. Once the seam is in, I'm going to move it off the edge. Now with the seam moved off the edge, I'm going to copy special linear, basically uh, two feet on center. So that way these connections are all down along the joint of the T's. Over on the side, I'm going to load in my top and bottom plates, which is a detailing component, which will place exactly as it's named, the top and bottom bearing plates for the double T's on both of the ends. Next, I'm going to load the tool 80 for lifting anchor. You can see when I single click on the T's, the tool automatically knows and understands where the stem of the T is to be placed appropriately. Next, we're going to be focusing in on the deforming tab. You can see by default right now, I already have 15 inches of extreme camber built in here, but I can just turn that to zero. And notice how all of my seam plates, lifting anchor points, and my top and bottom bearing plates all adjust accordingly. So I can click on that right T and add a six inches of camber, and you can see how all the plates are dynamic and parametrically linked to that shape geometry. You don't have to rerun any tools or remodel, remodel any plates. It's all just done on the fly for you. Next, I'm going to load in the out-of-the-box double T reinforcement. And with just single clicks there, you can see Tecla utilizing the same tool and applying it appropriately to a cambered shape versus a flat shape next to it. The reinforcing is all conforming to the cambered profile. You can see all the, the mesh and the flange along with the stem, strands and whatnot all conforming to that cambered shape. To make matters even more tricky, we're going to add a 10 degree warp on the start end, which is going to be this yellow handle directly over here. We're going to add 10 degree warp, and just like that, you can see now we have that warped end. And take note of all of our lifters, our bearing plates, all the reinforcing, and then all of our seam connections down the joint there. Everything all updating on the fly. Next, we're going to be taking a look at how to do this with a systems approach for your whole floor bay. So using the floor layout tool here, I'm going to model in a bay of plank, or sorry, of double T's, and ensure that your direct modification is turned on. When you do that, you'll notice these blue handles that appear. Basically, what I'm doing is grabbing the handles and locking them to different grid points. These will indicate my cricketing effects as far as up and down for drainage. Every time you grab and pull one, Tecla will automatically generate a new one at, at the midpoint of that line. Pull this last one. Now, the what I'm doing there is pulling it off the grid and then reattaching it, so that way it generates the point. Now I can turn my DM off, and then now I have nice handles at all those locations. I can come to a nice end view here, where I can easily grab both of the handles do a right click move special linear and move in the Z axis 10 inches to create a nice drainage effect. Now the nice thing here that Tecla is doing is it's, it's moving your entire floor system. So you don't have to worry about typing in different degrees and whatnot. It, you're letting Tecla handle all of that for you. So that is it. Thank you for watching.